Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow out of Diagnostics. At a local shop today, we have a sick Volkswagen 2015 Golf with the turbo four cylinder, two liter engine. Uh, the story I got was something smashed the connector for this high pressure fuel pump. So they replaced the high pressure fuel pump, replaced the connector. You can see buck connectors on the pigtail. And then they were doing more testing. They cut these wires and then re-splaced them. So that's what we have to work with. And they still said it's in limp mode. Check engine lights on, EPC is on. It's kind of reluctant to rev. In the ECM we have fuel pressure regulator A control circuit high and turbocharger boost control position sensor circuit range performance. Okay, let's get in here. Let's make sure this is a current code. You know, if we clear fault codes, and check engine lights off. There we go, active static code P0092. All right, let's shut the engine off. Restart it. Clear DTCs. No DTCs at the moment. Start it up. It is a stick shift. So warning lights are off. It revs nice. Eco tip, do not activate the gas pedal when stationary. Oh, shut up, Volkswagen. EPC lights back on. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what EPC means. Let's read DTC one more time. There it is, P0092, trouble code. All right, um, pull up some wiring diagrams. And for these high pressure pumps, Usually the two wires go to the ECM and they're duty cycle controlled. You know, they want to move the valve one way or another and then keep it there. So I think we're going to have to use a scope to put it on both wires and see what the signals are. Alright, so in the owner's manual here, EPC says engine control malfunction, electronic power control. Have engine checked immediately by an authorized Volkswagen dealer as opposed to the check engine light. Engine malfunction, ease off the accelerator, carefully drive to the nearest authorized Volkswagen dealership. Have the engine checked. Okay, so basically same thing. I don't know why they have two different lights. Um, let's pull up some information. All right, so I pulled up a few data pits here. High, uh, high pressure actual value, fuel high pressure deviation, and then high, fuel high pressure specified value. The specified, he wants at seven bar, okay? And the actual value goes up to 9, 10, you know, so it wants it lower. Okay, what if we unplug, what if we unplug the control valve? So I don't know, they probably didn't use an OEM pump. So I'm going to unplug it, see what happens here. Will anything change? So nothing's changing. And read fault code, code one more time. It's, so it's basically unplugged. It's not doing anything at all. All right, let's do some circuit checks. All right, so I have both wires back probe. Channel one is on this black and red. Channel two is on the yellow and black. Oh, I'm sorry, blue. Channel one is on the yellow and black. Channel two red is on the black and red. All right, so I got one more channel on this high pressure pump and. I just talked to the shop owner. He did say it was a Bosch unit, which 
supposedly OEM equivalent, but um, made in USA. Da, 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 da. But we don't, you know, can't be 100% sure. So let's measure the current and see if the current's good, you know, if the solenoid's moving. Then we can manually just touch power and ground to there and make sure it clicks. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens here. Look, guys, there's no current. There's no current going through that pump. Zero. I mean, zero current. Let's measure the resistance across the pump. So, the resistance across the pump should get a good reading. 0 0.6 ohms. Okay, so the pump is continuous. Now, this aftermarket connector, I did check the pin drag and that was fine let's try that again maybe the amp clamp is a little finicky let's see it's zeroed out let me press the button Ha, huh, nothing on the green channel. Nothing at all. Maybe the amp clamp's shot. Let me try another amp clamp. All right, we've got my second amp clamp adapted. Yes, we do see something on the screen. I pushed the zero button. Yep. Okay, let's try this one. All right, here we go. Let's fire it up again. There we go. So the amp clamp was faulty, and boom, it just shuts it off. It does not like something. It does not like something. What does it not like? See the current goes up to one amp, decreases, everything's good, but it does not like the circuit. Is it possible when the connector is smashed and they're driving it around, Something in the engine computer, like the drivers, got messed up if it's shorted together. Uh, I don't know. Alright, so interesting finding here, this transition. So at first, looks like everything's good. The, uh, the high side is pulsing, the low side is pulled to ground. And when it shuts it off, we get the inductive spike. We get a nice current, you know, from one amp to about half an amp. And it keeps going. Now here, Nothing's happening. I don't know if that's a check. And here, again, we're back to normal. And there's a transition. See, that's still normal. Right there, you can see it. We go from normal to this right here. Where it ramps it up and then doesn't hold it appropriately. So I don't know if that's a strategy or if it's getting ready to set a fault code. So here it you know ramps up to 15 amps maybe or yeah 15 amps. Jeez, one volt is 10 amps. So these ra these ramps are actually going up to 10 amps and then it comes back down to five amps. Yeah, it's about right, you know, half an ohm resistance of the pump. What does it not like? It doesn't hold it here, it just ramps it up, spikes it. See the current going higher and higher? This is 14, it starts at about 11. Apologize about the glaring. Goes up to 14. These these spikes. So just just collecting data here. What is what is the computer not like? So that's 1.4 milliseconds. 
and then further down the line one point two milliseconds why is the current going higher and higher the computer does not like this it's the same hold time and this ramp is getting higher and higher for the same you know 1.2 milliseconds it goes up to basically 15 amps isn't that crazy in the beginning where it's I guess mostly happy it goes up to about 11 amps so 1.2 was the uh, the weird one and this is 1.5 Hmm, how can we prove what's going on here? Can we substitute a test light for this high pressure pump? Like a 5 amp test light? Let's try it, see if the computer's happy with the test light instead of the pump. So here's the beauty of banana jacks. I'm just plugging into the back probes and I unplug this, but keep in mind the current now is going to go from here back to here. Okay, so we want our amp clamp this way around that return wire to keep everything consistent on the scope. Um, and then we can watch the test lights here, see if they flicker or something. Alright, ready? Here we go. Let's see if it sets the fault. Oh, this is crazy. It's not shutting off the pump. Look at that. It likes it. It likes my test lights. Is it lighting them up? Yes, they are dim. Look at that. It gets a little brighter. That's cool. Okay, shut it off. And we can even clear the DTC, make sure the DTC does not come back. Let me save this waveform. So this is pretty neat. Our current now is not exceeding right there, 900 millivolts. That's 9 amps. Okay, that's my test light. You can see that the current does you know, ramp up very quickly. It, it's not an inductive coil. So let's run it one more time. And see, it's a long crank time because that pump's not energized, but will we set any fault codes? EPC light is back on. Oh, I guess it did not like something there. Let's see. I think this thing is very picky. Huh. Try again. Hmm. All right, so I reduced the Tesla amperage to four amps from five amps because on the initial startup, before the filaments get hot, you can see that amperage does go above that magic whatever ten amps. So I cleared the codes. No check engine light. Shut it off. 
Restart it. Long crank time, yes. No check engine light, no EPC. Everything is happy. You see the test light is glowing. That's the four amp setting. And I can shut it off. And then restart it. Yes, it's a long crank time, of course. Read DTC. It might have some, yeah, there we go. Fuel rail system pressure too low. Perfect. So what do we just prove? Engine computer's fine. Wiring's fine. The aftermarket connector is fine. The actual high pressure pump that they put in draws too much current. Eventually, it ramps up as it you know warms up or whatever. It goes above the 10 amp threshold, and then the computer is like, nope, we're shutting her down. So, OEM only, I'm going to tell them go to the Volkswagen dealer, not World Pack, not Bosch aftermarket Volkswagen dealer. Get this pump, put it in, and it's guaranteed. If it acts up again, I'll be back here and tell them keep the old pump or this Bosch pump. We can compare the resistances, do the exact same measurement, and uh, verify that these pumps are not the same. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. And without a scope, you would be dead in the water on this on this car. Tell me, tell me I'm wrong. You need a good scope, multi-channel, two channels minimum. Here we're using three channels, both control wires. We want to see what they're both doing. They're both important and current. Current was extremely important on this one. And think outside the box, is it, can we substitute a load that's similar to, um, to this pump? Absolutely, we dialed in a test light pair, just two bulbs. How simple is that? No power probe, no load pro garbage, just test lights. It's amazing. So uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.